Hi, welcome to this lecture on environment adaptation of animals. Now on this third video on thermal relation, we are focusing now on the ectotherms, meaning the poikiloterms. And the poikiloterms and ectotherms are meaning the same animals, but uh, they characterize different aspects of these. Poikiloterm means just that, okay, the body temperature is variable, so it's not always the same. And ectotherm means that, okay, the outside conditions are determining the body temperature. And if we want to be very strict, neither of these is exactly true for several animals. We started these lectures with these uh, bubble bees that were producing heat for their flying muscles. So in that case, the uh, conditions outside are not determining the temperature of this muscle. And actually, especially on uh, terrestrial poikiloterms, the body temperature can be different than if we have a thermometer beside them. And the living conditions are affecting on the body temperature. So in aquatic ectotherms, they have the same temperature as their environment. And why is that? Well, because if the temperature of the fish is different than the surrounding water, we know that the water is very poor insulator, so it will absorb all the uh, energy from the fish, so they will be in the same temperature. And in these terrestrial ectotherms, they have quite often the different body temperature than the environment. So we have a lizard and a thermometer. The lizard temperature can be higher or cooler. And it's caused by radiation and evaporation. So they can absorb uh, solar energy to, to get, get the body temperature a little bit higher, or they can breathe faster to cool it down. And quite often, ectotherms are called cold-blooded, but let's put cold-blooded only in the detective stories because the lizards and insects, the body temperature can be even higher than in humans. And ectotherms are very common in the nature. So only 22% of the vertebrates are endotherms. We have birds, 16%, mammals, 8%. And even if we are comparing the terrestrial uh, vertebrates, it's about uh, 50% are uh, endotherms and 50% are ectotherms. So this ectotherm is more common than we, we normally think. And animals, especially on the terrestrial environment, they ha can have this behavior thermoregulation. We started these lectures with these bumblebees that, okay, they were producing heat in the muscle, but actually uh, it's affecting also in the whole body temperature, this behavior. So here we have a model of lizards uh, living in the Mediterranean island. So there is a thermometer in different places where the, the uh, lizards usually exist. And trying to collect that, okay, what kind of micro habits, hab habitats there exist. And they should have body temperature varying from 20 degrees of Celsius to 50 degrees of Celsius. But actually, the uh, body temperature of all these lizards in the island, they vary only from 30 degrees of Celsius to 40. So it's m less variable than the prediction. So some of these are cooling down their body because they don't want to have the body temperature of 50 degrees of Celsius. And the majority of these, fish, uh, of these lizards are actually get, trying to increase the body temperature. So they, it's not any more 20 degrees of Celsius, it's 30. And how they can do it? Well, first of all, they shuttle between the sun and shadow. So if there's a, a rock that is getting, getting sunlight, they go on the rock to get the sunlight and, and heat the body up. And then when the temperature is increased, then they go to shadow. And they can also flat themselves against the substrate, like the warm rock to increase the conduction, to get the body heated by the, the temperature of the rock. 
And of course, then if the body, the body temperature is already quite hot, then they are not anymore on the rock, but they might go climb in in the trees, etc., et, et to decrease the conduction. But also, although the fish temperature is the same as the environmental uh, environment, so meaning the the water, they prefer some layers in the water masses. So we have some animals or some fish that if you want to catch them you put the trap in the bottom on on them some other other animals you trap them in 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 the surface layer. So some are in the cool bottom waters and some others are in the shallow warm waters. So even they are having this thermal regulation. But still not everybody in the act ectotherms uh, can live in the optimal temperature. So, for example, desert iguana, it likes to have body temperature maybe 40 degrees Celsius, but what about if it's a cloudy day? It's completely impossible. And that's why they must also tolerate some uh, temperatures that are not ideal. And this tolerance can be varying. So some of them can tolerate wide range of temperatures from 0 to 40 degrees Celsius or whatever. And then some are stenothermal. So they have limited thermal capacity. So they can tolerate maybe uh, from 0 to 10 degrees Celsius or from 30 to 40. So the activity is affected by the temperature and we have stenothermal animals like in Finland we have burbot. In winter time it it can go on the, in the surface layer of the of the of the lake and that's the only time of the year when you can catch them quite easily. But it's actually the body temperature is never above 13 degrees of Celsius. So in the summertime it goes in the uh, deepest places of the lake and stays there because it's colder. But then we have the Eurothermal Crucian carb tolerating from 0 to 36 of the degrees of Celsius. So it's, it's a, a very large variation of temperature it can tolerate. And okay, Crucian carb is living also in, in small ponds where the temperature water temperature can be rising quite high and that usually they are quite so swallow so it might be that okay there is no places to hide from the temperature rises. Okay what happens if the temperature is acutely changing? The temperature is affecting on the activation energy of all the reactions and that's why the reactions happen faster in warm. All the molecules are moving faster and th that's why also the uh, enzymes are working faster. And this increased the metabolic rate. And it looks like it's increasing it exponentially, but actually it's not. So it's approximately exponential. So that's why quite often in physiology, metabolic rate in different temperatures is, is uh, shown in a semi-logarithmic coordinates where the uh, metabolic rate is in uh, logarithmic scale but the temperature is in uh, normal linear scale. Um, because, well, these scales are a little bit difficult, so quite often we use a physiological parameter like temperature coefficient. And this is just the ratio. Okay, how much is the metabolic rate, for example, at 10 degrees of Celsius versus the metabolic rate at 0 degrees of Celsius? So now the temperature difference is 10 degrees of Celsius, and then you have the ratio that you can uh, compare between different animals, etc. So let's have an example. Okay, over here we have oxygen consumption in tiger mold capillaries measured in different four different uh, temperatures and of course it looks quite nicely exponential and when using a semi-logarithmic scale they can be estimated the the 
temperature coefficient can be estimated quite easily. So even in higher temperatures, now when they are in the logarithmic scale, the dots are quite near each other. So you can estimate that, okay, how much is the oxygen consumption. And when comparing from 0 to 10, okay, the temperature coefficient is actually quite much too. But then, from 10 to 20, the difference is higher. And from 20 to 30, it's again higher. So, it means that actually this temperature coefficient is affected by the tem temperature itself. And that's why it's uh, not poor scientific, it ha doesn't have poor scientific meaning. Uh, so it's, it, you also, also always have to uh, take care that, okay, on what scale you were using and, and etc. Okay, what about then the chronic responses? So if you put ectotherm in a chamber and change the temperature for several weeks. It affects it on the acclimation. So it's kept chronically in different body temperatures. And for example, a fence lizard, you put it in two different temperatures, the standard metabolic rate can be tested in different temperatures. And in the acute temperature change, the, it affects directly on the metabolic rate. And over here even you can see that between 16 and 28 it increased, uh, but then it increased even faster or steeper from between 20, 28 and 33 degrees of Celsius. But when you have warm acclimated them in 33 degrees of Celsius, the oxygen consumption is lower in all temperatures. So they are modifying their uh, uh, oxygen production and oxygen consumption somehow during this acclimation. And this is called compensation. So if the animal is um, uh, acclimated in cold, they upregulate the metabolism. And that's called partial compensation. So, when the animals are exposed in cold temperatures, the oxygen consumption is decreased drastically. But, to maintain the body functions, they increase the metabolism during this cold acclimation. Well, we can also understand it a little bit differently. So, you can put the animals in several different uh, temperatures and test them in different temperatures also. So then compare that, okay, what is the uh, metabolic rate at their acclimation temperature? And you can see that, the, okay, now this uh, black line with the chron showing the chronic response, it's the steepness is less than in these acute responses. So they are modul modulating their their body functions depending on the on the temperature. And how they modify it? Of course, if the metabolic is is changed, of course it affects on the uh, oxygen consumption, and well that affects that. Okay, if the oxygen consumption is changed, most probably there's something to do with mitochondria. So the acclimation affects on the capacity of oxidative catabolism and that's why during the cold acclimation there's more mitochondria per, uh, per unit of mu muscle in the, uh, in the animal, especially in the red muscle fibers because these, are the these fibers were those that were relied on the uh, oxidative catabolism. Okay, you have more mitochondria, then you can use more oxygen and produce more ATP.
but also in these mitochondria there are more enzymes so you increase the enzyme production to have more enzymes in the mitochondria and then you have also more mitochondria in these uh, in these cells and that's why you can compensate the decrease of ATP production in cold because in in the cold temperatures well the, all the enzymes are working slower so the ATP production would be quite drastically decreased but now you have more enzymes more mitochondria and that's how you upregulate it so you have this partial compensation but we can also think it in the uh, opposite direction that okay the warm temperatures are speeding the metabolic reaction and that's why the animals can limit the activity during this warm acclimation and actually that's a very good benefit because when they are limiting this metabolic rate by lowering the amount of enzymes and lowering the amount of mitochondria then they actually are making it uh, the animal able to tolerate higher temperatures well so far we have discussed on few examples that were acclimation so something to do with laboratory but similar changes we can find also in the wild populations and these of course are called acclimatization so there are several factors that may change for example if we are collecting animals in the Finland year-round there is a different amount of uh, uh, sunlight available also the temperature is uh, changing there might be a different uh, amount of snow or the different amount of rain de uh, depending on, 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 on the on the on the season and one classical example of this is already made in 1950s they just collected mussels from the west coast of US so in the in the Pacific near the Pacific Ocean and depending on the location they have differences in the water pumping so when getting collecting the uh, mussels and testing the how much water they are pumping in different temperatures you can see that okay in colder temperatures they are pumping less water but then if you collect them in different area they are collecting a little bit uh, they are pumping a little bit more and collecting them in the third place they are collecting again more especially at the cold temperatures so, so there might be there, there is no large variation at 20 degrees celsius among these these muscles but then those muscles that are, have been collected in higher latitudes they are able to pump water also in cold water so that's because the temperature in these different latitudes is different than the temperature is a very good quest for affecting on these responses but because it's acclimatization we you never know what is the real reason and well that can you test if you do the both i think we were we were discussing on these uh, changes in the double bonds of uh, phospholipids uh, previously on this course but this fine study uh, was made that okay the crucian carb brain lipids were either collected throughout the year or the animals were put in the uh, in the aquarium where they were constantly kept in eight or four degrees of celsius 16 degrees of celsius or 30 degrees of celsius and you can see the same chains so whether they are collected from the pond or from the aquarium in warmer temperatures the there's less double bonds in in typical phospholipid of fish prey and that means that okay then the temperature is the key factor during this acclimatization also okay 
temperature rising increased the metabolism and it increased all kind of activity in the animals. But what about then the thermal limits? So why some animals or any animal cannot tolerate all the temperatures? So the metabolic rate increase when the temperature is rising. And however, at certain temperature, the aerobic activity cannot anymore increase. And so that's why there is a peak in the, for example, in the animal growth at certain temperature. After which, in the higher temperatures, the oxygen delivery is insufficient for the energy needs. And that's why the animals are getting weaker. They are not moving anymore so fast. They are not growing anymore so fast. And sooner or later, the resting metabolic rate is consuming as much energy as their, the animal can supply oxygen. That's why the animal is not anymore able to move. And that causes the death. But still, this high, high, high critical temperature is much lower than where the proteins are denaturated. Or even when the proteins are stopped working, when there is a, a reduced activity of the proteins. So the animals tolerate much li more limited range of temperatures than the cells or the proteins. And that affects on the uh, aerobic scope of, of even real animals. I think we started uh, this course with this uh, sockey salmon that is moving from the ocean why the uh, through the through the rivers uh, for the places where they they lay the eggs and depending on the temperature of the water and the temperature of the of the body it's affected okay how much oxygen they can they can uh, use in the uh, in their metabolism and so you can see that okay the peak is somewhere about uh, 17 degrees of celsius and if it's 20 degrees of Celsius, then they are getting in large problems because they anymore anymore they can't produce so much moving for to to lay the eggs, etc. And that even affects that okay where the animals are living. For example, uh, the growth rate of of the animal. In, uh, this time, uh, common eel top, eel pot, is it's decreased already at 17 degrees of Celsius. So there's the peak somewhere even below the 17. And they actually, if you put them in the laboratory, you can raise them in 23. And actually, that's quite much the same place where they decrease this uh, growth rate is where they are losing the abundance in the sea. So they live where they are growing fast and not where they are not anymore able to move, etc. And quite often this limitation is explained as oxygen delivery and use as I have described during this uh, PowerPoint presentation, but actually there is also an alternative uh, theory that it could be the circulation that is limiting the uh, animal, uh, are the animal able to live in certain temperatures or not. So in, when increasing the temperature, it might be that the first thing that they, they will expose is some kind of heart attack. Thank you.